Yeah. All from uh, uh, 1 to 5 p.m. on Saturday at Kaiser University. So it's Cento S here? I feel like I heard that. No. Yeah, no, I would say Debian, yeah. Alright, yeah, so I am um, good evening, I'm I'm Rob McKinnon, and uh, I'm your presenter for this evening. Um, I've been with the Linux users group here since somewhere in the late nineties. Yeah. I did uh, 20 years in the Navy from 87 to, uh, or 87 to 2007. Wow. Um, after that, I was a Unix administrator at Modus. And then it morphed into something else. Um, yeah. I didn't know you were a bubblehead. I was, 20 years. Um, after I left Modus, I, I jumped ship to a little software company called Main Street Softworks, where I was a network engineer. I set up their router switches in between three different data centers. That was fun. And I blame Brad for my Gentoo problem. Yeah. <laughs> Brad is the uh, CTO of, of Main Street Softworks. Uh, I'm currently working at Bank of America right now as a business analyst, level three. I'm really good at spreadsheets now. <laughs> I can V look up and pivot with the best of them. <laughs> What's the highest level? <laughs> I don't know, and I'm not. I don't know if I want to know. Um, Slackware is my distro of choice. Nice. Um, I, I love Slackware. I've, I've given presentations on installing Slackware. I've installed Slackware on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I've done that I, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I gave a presentation to the Google Cloud Developers Group last month uh, on that Raspberry Pi running Slackware. It was extremely slow, but it ran. <laughs> it was a it was a Pi version B. Mm -hmm. well, one of the, uh, the second Pi generation. B? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. One uh, B or something like that. It was yeah really old. Uh, I've given uh, presentations on the following blog. If you'd like to see one of those resurrected, let me know and, and I'm sure I can pull those up somewhere. We do have some of those up on uh, YouTube. We do. Uh, so those you'll have to get on for a second and swing this over here. And back in 2013. Don't have that one. <laughs> that one's on YouTube, I what? believe. Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Ah, crap, I've been running this too long. <laughs> <laughs> I gave a presentation called Pie on the Pie. I believe um, that was actually when we were doing the Google Meetings. Uh, it could have been, yeah. Oh, maybe. I think we were using like Hangouts. Pi was, was trying to do that. Yes, because yeah. this was, um, was at the, the data center. Yeah. Um, Peak 10, yeah. Not, yeah, Peak 10. Peak 10, yeah. Thank Sorry. you, Dan and Rob. We appreciate your long service <laughs> to the Linux users group. Uh, right. Really? Why are you not working out? There we go. Fine. Advance now? Are we going to understand this if we didn't see part one? <laughs> yes. Um. So, way back when, around that time, um, I went home on, on leave uh, to my parents' house, and uh, my dad and I got interested in fractals. And uh, we decided, between he and I, that we would write a program to generate a fractal. How hard can it be? <laughs> Neither one of us are programmers. So we asked around, and it's like, well, what? What should we use to, to build this program? And lots of my friends recommended C++. So we went to the store and bought Borland's Turbo C++. And we bought a book, and we learned C++, and we built this, uh, we built a fully functional C++ program that generated the Mandelbrot set and allowed us to zoom in. It took us about two full weeks to learn C++ and generate this program, but it worked. And ever since then, I've been trying to redo this on occasion, and I finally doubled down and got it working again. And uh, I've been wanting to present on this uh, uh, for quite a while. 
You could just order ultra fractal. That's far too easy. Be no fun. Fun is the hard way. Um, when we initially did this, it was on my dad's 386. I think it was a 25 megahertz machine. And it took about 45 seconds, I think, to generate on his machine. And then, of course, I, I took the code home and, and did it on my HP um, uh, 486DX75. And I think it ran in like 15 seconds, and he was really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mouse. Why don't you like me? There we go. So that is a picture of the Mandelbrot set. <coughs> and what this picture represents is all the black that you see are pixels that are within the set. Anything blue or green or white or whatever are pixels that are not within the set. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right, good. So the Mandelbrot set is a set of complex numbers for which the function z to the blah 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 equals z to the n or z sub n squared plus c. That does not diverge when iterated from z equals zero. Great. What does that mean? <laughs> First off, what is a complex number? All right, stop. Everybody, close your eyes. Put on your, your, your college or your high school math hat. Remember back. Now, what is a complex number? Does it have an imaginary component? Yeah. It does! Yes. Very good! Yes! Well done! Well done! Wow. <laughs> That's why you close your eyes. Yeah. yeah. It has an imaginary component. A complex number is a real number paired with an imaginary number. Don't ask me what an imaginary number is. <laughs> Just remember I in your mind. Yes, the square root of negative one, right? Correct. How does that work? We'll get there. We'll get there. So a complex number is a combination of real number and imaginary number, like x plus i. And the next question, of course, would be, well, what the belief is an imaginary number, right? I'm still working on what's a real number. <laughs> imaginary number is a square root, or uh, is uh, i, or the square root of negative one. What's the square root of negative one? I. I. Because you can't have the square root of negative number. So they made a placeholder called I. What good is that? Well, if you square I, you get negative one back. Mm -hmm. If you add I plus I, you get two I. So you could have two I squared would be uh, negative two. I guess depending on where your parentheses are. And two on two <laughs> four is this two? So i plus i is two i, or i squared is negative one. So a little simplified math. Going back to our equation from uh, Wikipedia. z to the n plus one equals z to the n squared plus our number. This is the, the, the basis of the Mandelbrot function. If we start our first iteration where z starts as z, uh, z is always, first iteration, oh yeah, the first iteration z is 0 and n equals 0. And if we plug in 0 and 0, then z sub 1 equals c, because z sub 0 plus 1 is z sub 1 equals z uh, 0 squared plus c, so z sub 1 is c. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Yes. Second iteration, n equals 1, and z sub 1 equals c. So, um, that's, that's not really a minus sign, that's a dash for the second indention. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, z sub 2 is z sub 1 squared plus c, and z sub 1 was c, so it's c plus, or c squared plus c. The third iteration of that would be z sub uh, 2 squared plus c, and z sub 2 is this guy, 
So you square that and add it to C. That is the basis of the Mandelbrot set. And you plug in X and I coordinates for this for each pixel on that screen. And if it diverges from a radius of 2, that determines whether or not it's in the set or not in the set. There's mud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll get there. Questions? No, not yet? All right. This is where I'd love to have a whiteboard. You draw the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love that. That whiteboard, we just don't have a pen. <laughs> so if we have a number like x plus i or x plus you know, one i, and we square it. Remember foil? First has that inside less. Exactly, yes. Foil, keeping it fresh. <laughs> <laughs> we square this, we get x, uh, first ones is x squared, uh, x, t uh, x times i Outside. plus x times i, Inside. and your and, and your last ones, you get this guy. i squared is negative 1, so it's x squared plus 2xi. Plus one. Minus one. I'm sorry, minus one, thank you. Only becomes a positive if you have a double negative. Exactly. Well, technically it's plus negative one. Can you go one slide back again? Well no, if you do plus one. Back six one? Yeah. It does. Okay. Yes. Is uh C a constant or is that a just That's any the original number? point? Oh, okay. That is the original X plus I point. Yeah, that's not a constant, that's a complex number. That's your first complex point. May I move forward now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't sure if that was, or you asked me a question or not. All right. Um, so, in the code, I break it up into the real, real parts and the imaginary parts. The real parts of this are the x squared and the i squared. And I say that because when you square i, when you square i, you get a real number back. Negative one. Yeah, you get a negative negative value, whether it's negative one, negative five, blah blah, whatever. You'll you'll get a real value back. The imaginary part is the part in the middle. And we're going to show you how to do that in in the code. Uh, one last complication. We not only need to square it, but we need to add the original point back. So in my code I have the real number is, or the real part of our equation is the x squared minus the i squared plus our original x point. And the imaginary part is our 2xi plus the original i point. The Python code. X and I are our coordinates of our complex point to analyze. So I'm going to look at each point, each pixel on the screen, convert it to uh, an X and I coordinate. And I want to give it a maximum number of iterations to try. So does it escape within 10 tries, or 100 tries, or 1,000 tries? And that's what the max iterations is. If it escapes within 10, you get eh, an okay looking picture. If you, within 100, hey, this is looking pretty good. If within 1,000, ooh, it really looks good. If uh, the squared part, uh, the, the, uh, the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared is less than a radius of 2 squared, then you're uh, in the you're in the set. So I increase my iterations. I square the complex number and add it to the original point. Um, that's the real part, the imaginary part. Just like the last slide, two times the uh, value of x times the value of i, and then add the i, I part back.
Oh yeah. So, let me break out of this. Show you the Python code. So, real-world application of this would be for fractals in general, or this particular this particular set. This particular set to draw a pretty picture. <coughs> okay. <laughs> it, it's an art project. Yes, this is an art project. Oh, that's right. The resolution of that monitor yeah, that's not great. is uh, a little complex. Strange. Numbers are used a lot in physics. Those are misleading names. <laughs> Real and imaginary. <laughs> they are. They are. Uh, let's see. All right. So here's my here's my double loop. Uh, XP is the uh, X, X pixels and YP is the, the Y pixels. And I go from zero to the maximum range or the maximum resolution in X and to the maximum resolution in Y. And then I step one. I start my iterations at zero. Um, then I convert my my pixels on the resolution to my x and y coordinates. So if my screen resolution is I don't know what is my screen resolution on this guy. Um, looks like 800 by 650. 800 by 600, roughly. I want to convert that down to from x equals negative 2 to x equals positive 2. Because there's no need to go outside of that, because that's if it's outside of 2, then it's outside of my testing criteria. So I convert those, uh, I convert that, that scale. Uh, to x pixels and or to x's and i's from zero to two and or negative two and positive two, and then I do my my uh, I start my check. And iterations is less than the maximum of iterations, and you're within your radius of four. Run your numbers. Add it to the original point or square it. Add it to the original point. And you're going to keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that until you either reach your maximum number of iterations or the point goes out of the, out of the set. Once you get out of this loop, if your iterations, if you got out of that loop by meeting your maximum iterations, then the, paint, the color gets painted black. If you reached it by going outside uh, of the radius, then it gets assigned a color. There we go. If iterations is max iterations, then paint the point black. If it's not in the set, then make it a color. <coughs> yeah, point set, yeah, set fill. Draw that point, and then yeah, it's drawing a single pixel. It's drawing a single pixel. Yep. <coughs> For that, you know, x and i position, and then it goes and iterates x, and it goes to the next pixel and does it, it does the next pixel, and, and uh, analyzes each one, and then once it gets done with the x row, it moves over one and does it again. Um, Where's my mouse? There it is. Touchy little guy. Colors in Python. I have them up here. And I just have them incrementing by, uh, uh, by the iterations. So the first iteration, uh, if it escapes, it's red. And the next iteration, if it escapes, it's orange. And three iterations, yellow, blah, 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 blah. What if it gets denied? Um, Does it yeah, I don't recall off the top of my head. Okay. It probably just dies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not 
you, you know, okay. that's what it would do because it's not actually going to set that value, or it might actually be the color that it was the last run. <coughs> I was just saying it was continuous to be purple. Actually, it would probably blow up because that was a separate function, yeah. and it would have returned none. Oh, cool. So, do you always get the same image generated? Is there a variable you change for a different image? Um, I haven't played with that too much. As you can see, this is um, taking a while. Reminds you know? me of 56K. <laughs> <laughs> Except for horizontal so. instead of yeah. vertical. Yeah. Have, you, have you tried uh, taking all the, the subtractions and turning them into adding a negative number? That actually it really increases the math, uh, mathematical speed of the process. I'm going to post this code, and if you want to play with it, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't, I, I forget, I timed this once or twice and I forget how long it takes. Too long. Uh, yeah, too long, yeah. So this is, uh, this is the it, Mandelbrot. Running, the start of the talk. <laughs> yeah. just, just let it keep running in the background while you do the C. Tree stops it. It's fine, we have the rest of another presentation. Exactly. I uh, uh, should have run time against it. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, run time against it. Sorry to make you spot that again, but yeah, that would be a good idea. It seemed like it was getting slower after the first column. That first column seemed to drop. Well, I think the, the math was simpler. All right, what am I doing now? Uh, it's it's going to run time and once it once it's yeah. in. So time space dot slash Mandelbrot. But it'll make it so when it's done. Oh, it oh actually, I don't know if it's going to close whenever it finishes either. Is everything outside the set, I guess, on that one? Oh, oh it's inside the set. Whatever. Is there a specific Python? module you have to import first to draw on the screen? Yeah, there was one that he imported, but I can't remember what it's called. One second. Where am I? Dropbox C. Yeah. Right in the window function. <coughs> Graphics. Graphics. Yeah. And math. Yeah. That's it. You had to use NumPy? I tried using NumPy uh, and it didn't work very well on my Raspberry Pi. I have not tried it on this. Okay. But since this computation is so simple, I don't know if NumPy is actually going to speed it up. Yeah, Once cool. again, feel free uh, when I post my code to play with it. And if you get some increases in performance, let me know. What I was saying about the, uh, the, instead of subtracting, just add a negative number. Um, they did that in Stuxnet, because they did a thousand iterations of MD5 and another hash. Mm -hmm. And because they're doing so many iterations, they found it dramatically increased the speed by adding a negative number versus subtracting a number. Okay. Yeah. Every operation is just some form of addition, really. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Repeated it's, addition. Yeah, it, it, but somehow okay. turn the chipset into just faster. Right. Isn't there some place where you can go and they'll just tell you the speeds of the different operations? Yes, the Intel manual. It'll tell you exactly how many clock cycles each instruction takes. In relation to weight, it's always easier to gain weight than it is to lose it. So this is the um, this is the meat. Twice as much time to lose it. This is the meat of the uh, of the program in C plus plus. I'll scroll up in, in in a minute, but I just wanted to show you that I, I have my exact same. Uh, double loop here for the uh, x-axis and for the y-axis. Uh, iterations. Um, I have a function here because I use it twice. Uh, I use that function once to generate it and then once again uh, I use that function when I, uh, uh, I collect the coordinates with the mouse so I can zoom in. So that's why I actually created a function. Um, and then you square the complex number, add it to the original point, identical to the Python code. If iterations is max iterations, paint it black. Um, that's uh, red, green, blue. Alpha. And something or other. Probably. No, not, no, I forget what that's on. RGB and alpha. Yeah. Gamma. If it's not in the set, then paint it a color. 
In this case, what I do is I make it a shade of blue. And for each iteration, it makes it, you know, 10 shades of blue lighter. Oh, okay. So you're not doing all the different colors like you did? I am not doing all the different colors yet. This is just shades of blue? Yeah, shades of blue. So it'll actually take blue as a number? No. Okay. No, it's a constant. Blue's, so blue's a variable up here. <coughs> okay, that's what I was say. Yeah. All right, yeah, I see that. Blue, yeah, blue two, typically. Five, yeah, it starts at, yeah. Right, right. So it's just yeah. modifying a variable. There we go, there. In blue, it starts at 255 yeah. and then goes down. Yeah. Um, Does I've it? seen a lot of references to SDL. What's that? So SDL is the uh, the, the window drawing library. The graphic library. Mm. Yep. <coughs> up here for a reason. What was it? Oh, 1020, yeah, my window on this guy, it's 1024 by 768 is my window. So bigger than the Python, right? Yeah, Python was 8 by 6, yeah. Yeah, so this guy's even bigger. Um, I think I up to my iterations to 10,000. I think it was 100 on, on, yeah. the, on the Pi. Uh, yeah, on the Python. Uh, I've got a lot of variables declared that I don't use anymore from troubleshooting. I'll clean that up before I, or I may post it just like this. Well, I mean, <laughs> post it and, and like mark them as like these are troubleshooting variables. Yeah. Um, one thing I am one thing I'm still working on is um, is capturing the mouse. The, well, the mouse capture works. It works well. The problem is. Um, <laughs> I have to put a delay in here because it spikes my CPU. It's in this endless loop waiting on the mouse. Yeah. Um, there are programming <laughs> ways to get around this. One is a hack, which is to put a delay in there. Mm -hmm. Two is to use a system library that waits for you. And it should be an SDL. It's like wait event. And I haven't got that to work quite yet. You know, I know you've been coding in C for a long time. <laughs> There's profanity in your comments. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sign that it was a skilled engineer that wrote it. I think that qualifies for profanity. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty low level. <laughs> but whatever you see, this should work. Yeah. Everything in the documentation says this is how it does it. If you guys ever want a fun read, go go read the kernel. The oh, kernel, oh, oh, kernel comments are great. Oh, they're funny. Um, <laughs> This section of code waits for my mouse positions to uh, get the mouse button down position and the mouse button up position. And it grabs those two positions and then zooms in on that and rescales it. That's your other use of the conversion. Yeah. Yep, exactly. This down here. Uh, puts the uh, the scale. You know, I told you what the scale is from the X scale. It's like four initially, right? From negative two to positive two, and uh, it puts that scale in the title of the window. So as you keep zooming oh, okay. in, you see that scale change. <coughs> and and that's about it. And it destroys the window when you're done. Back up to the top. See if there's anything I missed up here. Declaring a whole bunch of stuff. One of the biggest differences is you don't have the different colors. But that uh, it's just, this is just shades of blue. So. Right. But that wouldn't cause too much overhead, I don't think. No, no it wouldn't. That would just be a simple uh, switch state, or switch state. Uh, we'll do those. This is the 1,000. <coughs> so you pre-compiled these. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It took about a... It's already going to be done before you slide it over. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. It's already done. Second, take a look. Okay, the resolution on this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> if this were full HD um, ten twenty, you would. Right. Yeah. Looks better with the lights off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, hit that light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Turn that one on. There you go. This is a great example of why you shouldn't vote in Python. <laughs> uh, how's the Python going? <laughs> oh man, that's cool. So they were wondering why Gentoo is slow. They decided to use Python to package it. So there's a scale. Yeah. 
So now my, it's from from uh, left yeah, position to right position, position or right to left. Huge. Your your point um, four. And then, uh, Can you keep zooming in? Or? <coughs> Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh, that is cool. Wow. This is this is the the cool part about fractals. This is all based on, on math. Mm -hmm. You can keep zooming in forever. Forever. You theoretically you can keep zooming in forever. So now if you run that again, you get the same output. Or all the same numbers. It's zooming in each time. What do you mean? No, I don't say that. You run it again. Will it look the same? Run it again. Like every time you run it, is the same image? Yeah. Initially, it starts from uh, two to two to. Negative two to positive two x yeah. scale. Hey, zoom into that little so tiny bit in the middle of that large Yeah, just yeah. want to see how complex it gets. Yeah, it's definitely Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it started another one. It's, it's like another one. one. Oh, you can keep going. Okay. That is so cool. And that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the case. Yeah. Seriously, how's the, uh, how's the yeah. Python code going? Yeah, bring, yeah, bring up the Python uh, window again. Uh, <laughs> it's still running. It's about halfway. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even halfway. You gave it way too much leeway. It looks like it's <laughs> 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 just colors. But that's yeah. Right. You gave it less than a tenth of the uh, to do than the, uh, <laughs> the other one? Sure. Yeah, it's only doing a hundred iterations versus yeah. ten thousand. Right? Yeah. It's got about a thousand. So we're at so we're one. at nine times ten to the fifth, mm -hmm. or ten to the minus fifth, for okay. our scale. Um, the uh, the background generator probably yeah. yeah. uh, We're at minus six. Yeah, you just come in here, click somewhere randomly a few yeah. times, and then screen yeah. it. Up. Yeah. <laughs> It could also be the difference using SD, SDL. Python might be using something else to draw on the screen. Could Ooh. be. Yeah, it could be over right here. Ooh. That's cool. Just turning into another mirror. Another, another one. <laughs> and if you keep going, there'll be another. Exactly. Like, look at it in the mirror. Hmm. Oh, this thing is kind of like a butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's not psychology. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what you see in the image. It does look like a, a Rorschach test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's kind of. That's, that's pretty cool. Let's see. Put them on t shirts. No. Smells. No. Smells. Oh, that's that's Oh, that's that, was, that, was, that was scary, yeah, like a germ or something. See the same yeah, whole complex like, numbers. And, and I think virus. this, I think yeah. this is about it's where the code freaks out. Oh, yeah. oh, I got there. Pickles. Go. So yeah, about well, the, about yeah, uh, uh, something it. times ten to the minus thirteenth is is about yeah. as far uh, as I can go decimal point wise. And I wonder if that's because your iterations. If you bump the iterations up, would you get even further out? Uh. This is all right. I think you um, just start running so this is on the one thousand. Yeah, because how, how much CPU usage did you just run? Through? I mean, we got we got. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not it's not doing anything once you generate that image, right? Yeah, so right. It's it's, yeah. 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 So, oh, so the CPU just, usage to, is, right. is minimal. Mm -hmm. or, or, or maybe is that a pair of fixed length on your decimal points? Yeah. Start hooking up GPUs. Here we go. Okay. Big it. So it's like a big end or right, long so this takes uh, double float. Yeah, you need a little, little bit longer to generate, but it does generate. And this is ten thousand iterations instead of one thousand. Uh, Python still so nice. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh crap. <coughs> so if I, I if I click and drag, um, single click to exit. Yeah. Yeah. Single, <coughs> single click to exit. Mm -hmm. I single click. Read your own instruction, man. I know. <laughs> Too much time to KDE. Seems to click for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just turn that on. I can't like that. I don't care. There's only I carry over for everything. I don't know. Oh, are we waiting for it? Or? My mouse? <laughs> oh, there it goes. It clicks in a light fire. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you, just, you, you went in and then you went into a blank oh. area. Oh, you went outside the set? That's it. He's on the edge. You can see the gradient. <laughs> oh, there he is. All right, we can find something to zoom in on. Oh, that's a cool one. That's kind of neat. Zoom coming from us. Oh, just in the piece, man. Oh, that's neat. Five times two to the minus seven. Ninja's dog. Eight. 
watching 2000 Space Odyssey. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm in the garage. Full of stars. <laughs> <laughs> That's all sound of me when I was born. Got <laughs> 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 your little arms, your little head, little feet at the bottom. I just see Chris Cummins in there. Yeah. Um, so is it taking longer that's to how process this? The camera was pointed at the wrong end. Hey, hey. That's, my, that's, that's, my, that's my best side. Hey, he was meditating. Oh, yes. Okay. Cool. Oh, wow. that's, oh, that's pretty good. Man. We're at, we're at minus 10 minus 9. Look, it's Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. That's Winnie the Pooh. And there's another one. <coughs> and another little one down there. So we got or 10. We, we, we got to 13 before it, but, uh, yeah, failed, yeah, it, it failed at 14. The Monday out of uh, 5,000. Let's go to 14. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. And away from back here, it looks like it's meditating, like in the center, like one of the little guys like meditating. Right. Looks like a plot. Look at that. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Stay up <laughs> like, like kind of like a Buddha with a big butt, right? <laughs> it could be a Buddha. That looks like Frosty got back. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it looks more like the Marshmallow Man from uh, Ghost It'll stay Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <clears throat> stay puffed? Mm -hmm. Nobody steps on a chart. Steps on a chart in my own. Yeah, I just thought it was stay puffed. Stay for some reason. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was the first one that popped in my head. So yeah, with 10,000 versus 1,000, it does take a little bit longer to, to generate. Okay. Yeah, but we might get a deeper image. We might. We might get another set. Yeah. I think if you put a lot of you're eventually going to come across the Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> We're getting a little inceptive here. Uh, might be all right. Wow. Almost like ocean ripples. Yeah. It almost looks like... Uh, Fuzz in the middle there. <laughs> well, we gotta figure out how far do we have to go to get this pixel again? Oh, yeah. uh, we have to 14. A lot of these gonna look like diatoms, to be honest with you. Uh, it's, it's pixeled again. Uh, so, but that's, that was pretty cool. It looked mold. So, <laughs> and from, from the side, I like. You misclicked, you got to a mostly blue area, you had just a touch, and then we did it all the way down in that little tiny. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're still <laughs> at a negative 14th right there, so. That might be a float issue. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I've reached the limit of, of, <laughs> of, of how far you can go. Right. right now, there. Just a little devil secret floater. But however, the 10K the, the, the one was definitely uh, more detailed. How's Python doing? Yeah, I was about to say, how's Python doing? <laughs> about a third of the way. <laughs> and Python turned into a panetta. Oh, wow. Penta. Sorry, I was too generous again. Uh, it's still down at, uh, what, a sixth? Yeah. yeah. I bet you found a way to wrap SDL from Python to be a little faster. Probably. Maybe. It's probably yeah. using a different... Yeah, the library's probably it's dragging it down. SDL, SDL is used a lot like, like cross-platform games. Oh, can, like can, can, can I kill this guy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see how long he's been running. Go, go back to your console. It's not going to oh, finish my next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been running for 16, 16 minutes. minutes. And it got a... And it was Six a 10 the way there. Python example or the C example. Yeah. Most of that time is the math, I think. It, I, I think it is it, too. I found it very slow. Yeah. Yeah, Python can and be a little slow with yeah. that sort of stuff. And then uh, there are some things like I've seen where like you can have it cache previous answers if you're trying to do like sets that are recursive calls. Um, but that I don't think would actually help here. Yeah, and there are some other libraries that are available for heavy math, but they're all written in C, and they've just got a Python wrapper over the top. <laughs> Python's pretty efficient when you do stuff like that. So one thing I can give Python is it does call native code pretty easily. Oh, yeah, it's easy to create binders. So that's my presentation. It was nice. <laughs>
Just go down. Just yeah. yeah. Colonel. Yeah. Current, well, current, current well, we we, we kind of had a thing, and I, I got a question for you that kind of popped in my head. You were doing mostly a graphical yeah. representation yeah. on this. What would happen if we vectorized it, like Ooh. ran a vector that's, image versus a graphical image using the same fractals? Uh, well, so what do you what do you well, more so, he's drawing the actual plot points as pixels. Right. Yeah, that's like a graph. So, yeah. so, so vectoring is not going to make any difference. Vectoring just means you can resize yeah. it. Yeah, 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 but I'm just thinking like from a scale point or maybe even just to make it faster. I think it's the library's Python user. Because yeah. in C++, it's easy to ask you SDL directly. But he had a good point, too, which was run it through like with maybe like a list or something like that. But don't know. I don't think it would matter. Yeah. You could go look at the library, the number, what, that you imported number? Uh, no. This is where you go to, on you know, this one you had imported. The number library. Yeah. Yeah. Math. You had same. imported the math library. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. For yeah, for go, Python. Go look at that library and see if it's all pure <laughs> Python. I think NumPy might be written in C with a wrapper, and so it might be faster. It is. That'll be something to test. <laughs> Yeah, we've tried it. Quick time. It's actually using some of the SSL. Is it now? Is it a drawing? Yeah, I got a couple of people were here last night. I have a thermal imaging camera. You out the part where it actually draws. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And just see if it finishes quickly. Don't you forget to my Oh, actually, better question. And I can get 10 frames a second. It's just on my drop bars. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, that's not good. We're going to have a lag 